All right. Um, uh, we needed a win. Obviously, it's an understatement. It's a great win for us. Um, we did a lot of things great. Probably what we did the best is, you know, coming off a tough loss on the road, a game that we were, you know, probably could have won, but we didn't. Uh, our guys responded. Showed you a little bit about our guys, the way we came out and started the game uh, and played terrific. Um, you know, I thought our fans were great. I don't know what the weather was like during the game, but I know it was supposed to be bad. And we had a great crowd. And we've beaten Indiana, Ohio State, and now Purdue, three really good teams at home without our students because the great crowd support that we've had and, and um, energy in the building was great. And we really needed them on the defensive end late. So proud of our guys, two great defensive teams. Um, Jalen Smith was terrific, both ends of the floor. He, he, was, he was great. And uh, our defense was terrific the whole game, except for maybe the start of the second half. Um, our defense was outstanding and then, you know, couldn't make shots in the second half. That's kind of what happens to us, but we kept guard. It didn't affect our defense today, so we ended up figuring out how to win. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck. Yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855 Big Dog One right now. Mark, in terms of, you always talk about how sometimes defense, the offense affects the defense. Yeah. In, in terms of today, it seemed like that when everything was going well in the first half, the defense played well. Yeah. But when everything was not going offensively, the defense still played well. Yeah. What What's the difference with the team? When When can you see it in your team with when when they are really locked in and it's not? Yeah. Them? Well, we've been locked in four out of five games now. We laid an egg one night. Everybody knows. I don't need to talk about it. Um, that team's been pretty good since they beat us too. But. Um, We've been really good for the last five games. So our guys were dialed in. I knew it. Um, the day we got together, um, what's today? Saturday, so Thursday. Yesterday's practice, they were dialed in. We walked through this morning, they were dialed in. So I knew defensively we were going to be locked in. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes in the second half, when you can't figure out how to score, uh, it snowballs. And that's what happened today. It kind of snowballed on us. The key is that we got really good looks there. We had two really bad possessions where Anthony had to pull up and shoot bad shots, and that might have been fatigue uh, for him more than anything. But uh, and also their defense was great. But um, um, you know, I, I thought we ran some really got some really good looks there late. We just didn't make them. So, but we got to the offensive glass, got some back tips, and um, it's hard. It's hard to win, but guys took care of business. So, proud. Mark, the, you mentioned Jalen's game today. I think he had 18, 10, and four blocks. The, the two bigs for them, Harms and Williams, I think were combined 12, nine, and two blocks. Yeah. Uh, just the work that he's been able to do to, to make himself able to withstand that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, is this kind of a manifestation you think of that? It's amazing what he's doing. And um, now our team defense was good, um, especially in the first half on the post. Uh, second half it was good at times, then we just let Sticks do his deal. But. Um, and I keep saying all summer he was going to be our four. Our team looked totally different, and um, and then it does now. And um, he's had to do it. And I think he had to accept it. He didn't like it at first. And I've never seen more good big guys in a league than – and I've been doing this a long time. Usually there's one – when I was in the Big 12, Texas, Kansas had pros. And then there's pros walking around everywhere uh, when we play it and, and uh, really good players. So he's accepted it. He went head up on those kids, used his length, stayed down. Uh, his timing was terrific. Um, it, it's a luxury. Um, and I thought our guys did a good job of you know, helping and fanning out the shooters. And we made, you know, we made some mistakes, they missed some shots, we made some mistakes, they made shots, but our guys were dialed in. There was a lot of communication out there. And um, I don't know what they shot, but it was, you know, great defense on our end. Seemed like you guys were moving the ball really well in, in the yeah. first half. Do you, do you think that was a good look at what you guys could be capable of uh, offensively? Yeah. Doing that? Well, it looked good because we were making shots, right? So I imagine there's 
four or five, six possessions in the second half, we really moved it and missed shots. It just doesn't look quite as good, does it? Right? So, um, but we were a little more stagnant in the second half. But give them credit. They adjusted to what we were doing. Their defense was, their defense is uh, really probably the best we've seen all year. Their defense is amazing. And they're on ball and they're guarding the ball. And we really couldn't get downhill on them. We've been able to get downhill on a lot of people in this building. We couldn't get downhill on them. So, you got to give a lot of credit to them uh, in the way they guarded and they locked in after halftime. They, they were terrific. Mark, um, Dante today had a career high 13. Yeah. Um, he he seemed to be a big part of that early run in the first half. Yeah. Um, how have you seen his game grow over this season and how much how much of a difference maker is he when he's hitting deep shots yeah. and he wasn't sure he was. So, one, he, he guards every night. He's a terrific defender. He's got toughness down there. Like, no Joel Eastern was scoring on everybody, and all of a sudden Dante was on him. He couldn't, you know what I'm saying? So he has that in him. You know, like the other night he was guarding one of the post players in Wisconsin. He scored on everybody but him and Stick. So, I mean, he's got that toughness to him. We need him to make shots. He was 0 for 4 Wisconsin. He makes a couple of them, you know, all of a sudden we're 5 and 2 instead of 4 and 3. Um, so those, those, those shots were big, and he, he works at it. He's grown up in his work habits and work in between before practice and after practice. He's really matured there. He was dialed into the scouting report today at, at a young age. Uh, he did a terrific job with that. So, uh, you know, he did, a, he did a lot of, you know, he did a lot of, he's really important to us. So, uh, helps us space the floor, and he's got in there, have to, have to be accountable, you know, just know the guy. So that gives you five guys on the floor that can score. And I thought Daryl did a great job of cutting. Daryl Darryl just didn't catch a break today. Poor kid was, I thought, getting hammered on a lot of those and didn't catch many breaks. But um, he did all the right things. And then I'm not talking about this, because I know people talk about it. We talk about listening and timeouts. Okay, so like, it was a tough game. We ended up winning. But we executed three plays and timeouts, which we haven't done all year. We got three back doors, layups. Two layups and Dante's out of bounds and under with six on the shot clock. So we weren't doing that. And the guys weren't, they couldn't do it. They couldn't translate it from the board to the court. So everybody wants to get frustrated. Well, I'm frustrated. So we get we got better in that. So that's a step in the right direction for us. It's like, we're like, wow, this is great. Really makes us, you know, we can execute after timeouts better. Um, you know, got off to one of its best starts of the year, you know, especially taking that. Uh, going on that 9 0 run to yeah. start. What aspect of the way that you know your guys were able to play early impress you the most? Well, just that um, you know, it's gonna be an up and down season uh, when you're in a great league. And how you respond to it is really important. And in my mind we've played four out of the last five games really well. Okay. And that's what's important. And what was important is how they responded when everybody thinking the world's coming to an end and writing about us and talking about us and our, we're just in our little bubble and I don't read it but I know it's out there because I get all the texts like hey don't listen to it all right but we're in our little bubble and we just try to get better and that's what we have to do we have to stay focused on what we're trying to do and, and keep getting better so we're resilient we got to we got to build our bench a little bit more as we as we move forward coach another good performance for Aaron Wiggins off the bench yeah. is there a little bit of feeling when he, when he gets that against Wisconsin off the bench that you may, maybe don't want to mess with that rhythm and kind of have them that spot. Yeah, well, we got two guys that want to come off the bench. And I have to I have to force one of them to start, so you guys can figure it out. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, and uh, they'd both rather come off the bench. And before we played, might have been Iowa. I grabbed him and said, "I don't care who starts. One of you's got to start. One's got to come off the bench. I think we should flip it." And they didn't do it. They decided they weren't going to do it. I can't remember which game it was. And then finally, I was like, okay, you don't have a choice. We're going to flip this uh, type deal. And um, so, yeah, he's, I mean, we need him. We need, we need him to score, right? And um, it's great when he's making shots. He made two threes in the first half and missed a couple in the second half, but he got good looks. So, and then because he's playing better offensively, his defense and rebound, he's back to where it needs to be for us to, to be successful. Uh, Coach uh, Cho only played a couple minutes yeah. tonight. Uh, I mean, it's, it's clear he's still trying to get acquainted to a uh, yeah. ten basketball. What do you what do you think the next phase is in his development that you want to see? Well, I got four guys in the weight room right now lifting and doing extra cardio because they didn't play a lot tonight. So it tells you a little bit. He's one of them about our team. Um, 
they're frustrated, they want to play more. Chol's just not ready. I mean, you're watching the same game I'm watching. And um, two and a half years he didn't play, and major surgery on both legs five, four and a half, five months ago. We might not see Chol until next season, the real Chol, okay? Um, we just keep, keep hoping it comes. You know, the timing, you know, he can't get off his feet. He's a great kid, and uh, we'll keep, keep plugging away. Um, and, uh, but uh, we, we have to become a deeper team if we're going to be any good down the road. Mark, how important was the play of Anthony in the first half with the way he was moving the ball? I think yeah. he had six assists. Yeah. And does that sort of help your team when they rely on him so much for scoring where yeah. they win a game when he doesn't score? Yeah, he scored five points, we won, and a lot of that's because of our defense. But no, Anthony just wants to win. You guys, I've said it 20 times this year already. He came back to win. And, um, you know, he was so positive after the Wisconsin game. We're right there, coach. We're right there. You know, and, and, he, and he really believes it. And we, we all believe it. We're right there. We're getting better. We're getting better. Um, and, um, and so he does what it takes to win. And he had to do that. And then, you know, their pressure was bothering us getting into our half-court offense. And he really kind of eased that a little bit. So he's having a heck of a year. Really guarding. Our, our communication on defense today was, was really remarkable. And, uh, it's a good sign moving forward. Mark, in a conference where it's very difficult to win on the road, how important is it to be 11 and 0 at home? Look at the positive in that equation, and you know you, you really have to win at home. Yeah. You have. Yeah. Well, it's hard to win at home too. <laughs> so, um, you know, we get our next game. I think our students will be back. That'll be great, and hopefully, we can do some damage on the road here and get everybody excited. And, believing in this team at a high level, being positive about our team. I think that's real important in today's world because uh, it's really hard. And um, I think that will be big for us. But um, yeah, it's good. It's good to win home. You look at the schedule when it comes out and you see these three games without students. You're like, oh my gosh, it's Ohio State. It could have been number one a few weeks ago, right? And now they're two and five in our conference, just to give you perspective of how good our league is, okay? And then you got Indiana and you got Purdue, and it's like fans came out. I mean, it was terrific. And the weather for two of these games has been bad. And I look up and, you know, golly, it's almost full, which is, which is great, for, it's great for our guys. You know, the energy it gives them, confidence it gives them, uh, that's great. So it's not easy. We want, to be a, we want to be a really good road team the rest of the year. We know our schedule is extremely difficult on the road, uh, but we want to be a really good road team. So hopefully we can figure that out. Thank you.